Singapore's mass transit system is one of the most efficient in the world. I'd put them up against any European or Asian people mover any day of the week. Today I'll be taking the cable car, so the quickest route from Kempong Glong to the harbor is via the MRT. From anywhere around Little India or City Hall, just take the red line to Otram Park and look for the harbor front signs. It's only a 15 minute commute and this area of the city doesn't get a lot of traffic before 5 p.m. So there's more elbow room than normal along the way. The cable car connecting mainland Singapore to Sentosa Island is not just a mode of transportation, it's an event in itself. The aerial ropeway starts at Mount Faber, crosses Keppel Harbor, and passes over the giant theme parks and posh resorts on Sentosa. When it was built, it cost $5.8 million, and that was in 1974. Adult tickets cost $29 Sing dollars, and the cars can accommodate up to eight people. Well, here I am on the, the cable car headed over to Sentosa Island, and Sentosa Island is the resort area of, of Singapore. Uh, not like they needed a resort area, but in any case, this is it. There's uh, there's an Epcot Center over here, there's Swimming with the Dolphins, uh, there's, uh, what else, there's a giant actual hotel style resort here, uh, Universal Studios and all, all kinds of stuff. So in any case, um, I'm going over there, I'm going to do a, a Swim with the Sharks and hopefully they're fed by the time I get there. Uh, it's about 20 after 12 right now and, and that should give me about an hour. They usually do 1.30 and 3.30 swim. So, should be fun. The viewing area for the sharks is on the bottom level of the aquarium. There's a travelator that carries people through the submerged glass tube under which all manner of sea life is visible. There are 10 foot sharks, several hundred pound grouper, moray eels, medusa jellyfish, leafy sea dragons, five foot wide Alaskan king crab, parrotfish, and even sea turtles that are sometimes brought in from the outer viewing area. So here we are at Underwater World where I'm going to be swimming with the sharks in just a few minutes. The, the diver is going to come down and uh, bring us down with them, give us a little tour and give us some safety stuff. Um, but in the meantime, we got all kinds of stuff to look at. We got like grasses and stuff in here. And we got pufferfish. Oh, it's crazy. Sometimes you happen to see the morning you. Yeah. If you swim past you or what, uh, don't cut the morning you. Because morning you sometimes be crazy. Yeah. Uh, uh, you got uh, the eel. That's how when you come down, you go what just swim past. Normally they hide in the cave, the hole. But sometimes because here maybe the hole are limited, <laughs> they swim up. Uh, Whether they help them. Until they swim past, you don't cut everything. Uh, they shark I don't cut. Oh, okay. The long snakes, no. the eels. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Snake, I'll show you some uh, 
some area nobody hardly or so you can no? okay more important is this one now eagle ray and stingray as you know they have some bump on top of the tail they dangerous when they come very close to you actually they are very friendly they come very close to you your bow hand must always below them if you feel like touching them no problem feel the belly no problem as long as they very close the hand don't go above them they are fine once they are above accident may happen because when the hand above them they swim over left or right the bump may happen okay you'll be, you'll be coming out from here okay uh, coming down no, right. down here then we walk around on the belly no. okay we move back the way the cost of entry to Underwater World is 29 Sing dollars, and there's a 20% discount for two. To swim with the sharks, it's 125 Sing dollars. For the dolphins, it's 150. In either case, admission includes entry to the Dolphin Lagoon at Palawan Beach. The park is actually called an Oceanarium, and it's located in the heart of Sentosa Island, 500 meters offshore from Singapore. It opened in 1991 and reopened in 2010 after a quick revamping. There are more than 250 species of animals, totaling more than 2,500 marine animals from all over the world. Underwater World is also involved in several environmental and educational projects, such as the Living in the Ocean program and the Coral Club. They even have several exhibits in the aquarium that show how litter and pollution affect the marine biome. I missed the opportunity to swim in the dark, but they turn the lights off after 7 p.m. and the aquarium takes on an otherworldly atmosphere. Once you're in the tank, you're free to do pretty much whatever you want, which is a little scary. But as long as you use caution, safety is pretty well assured. And while I did almost step on a shark a couple times, I can say that they seem more timid than I would. They're definitely curious, which is not a comfortable feeling at first. But I think there's just this unspoken mutual understanding that even though we're invading each other's space, we both kind of know the rules. It's weird. I can't really explain it. In any case, I'd say that the leopard sharks were probably the most curious, yet they would never come within arm's reach. It's quite amazing how calculating they are. They're very precise as to just how far each diver can reach, and they stay just an inch or two beyond that at all times. The moray eel swimming by my head later tried to bite me. It passed me several times, seemingly for no reason. It was muy loco.
This was the international symbol for, my camera just died. That sucks. Oh well. By this time I'd clearly gotten a little too comfortable and playful. I wasn't really paying attention, and I almost stepped right on this giant, fearless killing machine with a mouthful of razors, so it might have been time to pack it in. I had one final stop before I end my amazing trip to Singapore, the famous Raffles Hotel, to buy a Singapore sling in the very place it was invented. At the time of the Johor Empire, Sir Thomas Stamford Raffles first appeared on these shores, but instead of seeing the same muddy riverbeds and overgrown jungle that everyone else saw, he saw a bastion of the British Empire lying in wait. And if half of Singapore's most lucrative ventures, boasting his surname, didn't keep his spirit alive, its myriad buildings with his designation surely would. There are hospitals, government buildings, hotels, and trade offices known as the Raffles this or the Raffles that than just about any other conglomeration around. It's actually kind of demeaning, seeing as his intent was to supplant his own heritage instead of celebrating that which was already here. He'd been victorious against the French and Dutch forces in Java during the Napoleonic Wars and had conquered much of the surrounding area for the British. In any case, his legacy now lives on in this amazingly over-polished watering hole. Everything about it screams opulence. But in the end, it's still a place where dudes try to hit on chicks. The only difference is that they do so by purchasing much more expensive drinks. For instance, the aforementioned Singapore Sling offers a superb story on which to base a great opening line to break the ice. As the story goes, this drink was first fashioned by Nyam Tong Boon, a bartender working here in 1915. It probably didn't set its first customer back $26 as it does today, but back then it had a much more readily available recipe. Pineapples from Sarawak were common in this region. And that forms the base for the original recipe of gin, sherry hearing, and benedictine. Today, it's little more than gin, grenadine, and sweet and sour mix. And in a way, the drink symbolizes the westernized hub that this tiny, commerce-motivated nation has become since the colonial era. It takes original local goods, creates a symbol of value rather than an actual item of value, markets it to big pockets around the world, and 200 years later, calls it culture. It's just the Singaporean way.